I just had my $5,000 editing computer stolen out of my studio while I was in it five feet away from me. My studio's in the third floor of that building right over there. And this is the video about how I'm gonna try to get it back. One old, well, no, this might be. It just takes me a minute to get this queued up. This person comes out of here and then we see his back going this way and he goes this way around the building. Yeah, that's, yeah of course. Yeah, it's weird. It's kind of greasy almost. Oh, totally greasy. So I filmed him. Thank you, Constable. I appreciate your help today. And it says it's in the post office building. I'm going around the post office building, banging on the doors, trying to get in where it says it is. I'm like knocking. My heart is racing right now. This whole laptop saga might be might be coming to an end. Okay, you don't right need here. to make this, man. Don't worry. You know why? I know that the that because I already he when he bring it here. understand how the laptop was stolen from five feet away from me you have to get a little bit of the layout of this space I've never shown this on camera but this is where my studio is specifically right here this is uh, my office but the rest of the space there's I think nine or ten different units in this whole co-working space and over here is the shared kitchenette this is where I make my coffee and over here this is a uh, conference room so you can sign this room out to have meetings. And I had made plans on the day that my laptop was stolen uh, to meet with my friend, Peter. We had just been working on this awesome video and I needed to record a voiceover and we were just about done. So I had signed out this boardroom right here for 1 p.m. I'm still struggling to figure out how this all took place. At 12.55, I took my laptop uh, over to the boardroom because it's 12.55 and we can get ready for Peter to be here. I take it out into the hallway. I come out here and I notice, hey, the door's closed. I'm like, that's a little strange. So I come over here, check the sheet, and it looks like someone had signed it out right before me. Uh, someone could certainly do that. So I come over here and I'm like, well, uh, I'm gonna make a coffee as I wait. I make, I make my coffee and I get a buzz on my watch. And I look at it and it's a text from Peter. He says, on my way, where should I park? The phone is not with me, it's still in my office. So I came back to my office over here, grab my phone and send a text to Peter. This is a co-working space, but it's also not really a co-working space because some of the rooms are rented by a therapy practice. But what that means for me as someone who rents from this room specifically is this is the reception area and there, there's no receptions. So people are coming into here all the time, every hour on the hour, multiple people. So what often happens, and this is the detail that maybe seems tedious, but it's important is that I'm the first office that most people see has a light on when they enter this space. So they often come in and knock on my door while I'm trying to edit. But what I did eight months into being here was I put blackout foam on the other side of my door and I tried to soundproof my area as much as possible. Not so that my, way my sound goes out, but so that other sound doesn't come in because the walls in this wing are paper thin and I can hear what's happening in all the therapy sessions, which, um, yeah, I didn't know that was legal. Now I say all of this about the therapy stuff, just to let you know that when I'm in this space, I'm trying not to look at other people that are coming in. I'm trying to give them their privacy. I can just tell they're uncomfortable when they encounter me or, or I walk by. So I try to just kind of be discreet and around the corner. And it's why sometimes I'll wait longer to, you know, come out of my room or I don't know. I'm just trying to explain to you that it's challenging for me to navigate walking around and moving through this space. And sometimes I make mistakes when I'm doing that. So I came into my office. This is my space. No one else comes in here. And I closed my door about this amount. So I responded to Peter. And now that I've explained to you that there's therapy happening in here, that's what was happening in the conference room. The conference room was signed out by the therapist. So I personally didn't want to just be like standing like an eager beaver right outside the conference room door being like, hey, are you guys done yet? And just, I don't know, that just, I, I didn't want to do it. So I'm standing here and waiting. And while I'm waiting, it's 12.59, I hear the front door open, which I normally do basically every hour on the hour when therapists are here. And I hear footsteps go by. 
and then footsteps leave. And at this point, it's 101, and I come out here. My coffee is now fully brewed. I'm excited, and, and it's just gone. Those first moments as I realized the laptop was stolen, I just felt so dumb that I had left it on the kitchen counter like that. That was just, I was being too comfortable in this space and and I made a mistake and I left it on a counter. And I think it was especially just frustrating because I'd been here for a year and three months prior, while I was here, people had cut the lock cut my lock, so cut two locks, opened the cage, took the bike, and just gone. And this was a freshly built bike that I had gotten ready for some adventure projects to take it. And I think that's something that you expect as a bike user that, yeah, some of your bikes are gonna get stolen in your lifetime. And it doesn't get, that doesn't make it easier or nice, but it's just how, how life goes. It felt just, I just felt so exposed to like in my space, in my office, in my studio, uh, to have someone enter that I didn't know was here and take my stuff while I was in it was just a special kind of surprise. I basically start freaking out pretty good. And there's a therapist that was here. And so I'm like, hey, like, hi, like, did you see my laptop here? And the response was no. And I said, well, uh, your client, did, did you see them leave? Did they, is there a chance that the, like, I mean, in, in the, the one minute window where you left, is there a chance that your client took my laptop and like, like did your client steal my laptop? And, and I'm immediately asking like, what did the person look like? And in an office building where everyone can hear the therapy calls, they're suddenly very uh, concerned about someone's privacy. <laughs> and this is where I realized I have find my iPhone to my laptop. I immediately pull out my phone to start trying to track where it is with the Apple tracking capabilities. And it's, I go down the street and it says it's in the post office building. And I'm going around the post office building, banging on the doors, trying to get in where it says it is. I'm like knocking. And I mean, it's a post office distribution center, so there, it's where all the delivery carriers pick up their mail and then go deliver it. And simultaneously also trying to call the police, the RCMP and get some help. And while I'm sitting there waiting, uh, my friend Peter, who was gonna meet me, uh, also showed up. So I'm standing outside of the post office realizing there's no way the laptop's actually in there. This is just where the last Wi-Fi router is. And it's proceeding probably further down the street. And at this point, Peter comes around the corner in his truck. I just had a little bit of a moment. And then it was like, okay, game on. Let's go find this dude with a laptop. Yeah. And you were down. Oh, yeah. I mean, what's your assessment of how this was handled? Well, it was sort of a combination of asking around, trying to get some of them to help us, and then also trying to follow the Find My iPhone that seemingly kept bouncing around and repinging right in that area, which kind of gave us hope that it was still there. And so, cause it would go for like, it would go last seen 30 minutes ago when you'd be like 30 minutes could be anywhere. And then it would be last seen a minute ago, yeah. right where we are. And seemingly moving amongst the people that we were in the sea of. I get a message from building manager that they have security footage. So I'm like, sweet, let's go see what this footage is. So we come back to the building and he sh pulls up the footage. this queued up okay. so ah, shoot. okay this person comes out of here and then we see his back going this way and he goes this way around the building no face shot no face shot there. yeah that's him of course he's putting shit in his bag piecing off once we got the security footage things made a little bit more sense shortly before one o'clock uh, someone entered the building through the open front doors. It looks like they were trying to sneak in uh, with a cluster of people, but the doors through the entryway are 
unlocked during business hours, so they didn't need to do that. And they walked up the stairs and roamed around the second floor, checking every door handle. And they checked every door for an open door and then proceeded to, once not finding anything on the second floor, going up to the next level, to the third level. And the first door they see on the third level is the co-working space. They check the door, it's open. They enter the co-working space. So they're entering the co-working space exactly one o'clock. So that was the door that I heard open the first time. They walk in, walk past my office. I see them walk past my office, see the laptop, pick it up, leave. And then seconds later, the actual boardroom door opens and more people leave. And that is that timing is wild to me that in the two minutes that I left my coffee making to go respond to Peter's text message and then realizing that maybe I should just wait for the people doing therapy in here to leave just to give them their privacy, that as I'm doing that, someone coming in at one o'clock who I think is here for therapy is actually just someone walking in to grab whatever they can and go. There's a bit of relief when you realize that it's not, it wasn't someone from this space. Uh, it was just a random person checking door handles that, that like, there's something about that that feels better, but it also is like, okay, now we got to get this laptop. Like this laptop's out there. It's fully locked down. They're not going to be able to use it. Let's find them. So I had taken some some pictures of the display of the security camera footage and armed with those new photos, we felt like we had more tools to go back down to the street and try find this thing. And also clarifying the details of who were potential people that might have taken it. That just helped solve some stuff. And we were down at, on the street where... Uh, clusters of people do their commerce and we're trying to ask people can like do you know anything about a laptop can we buy a laptop is there anything and the emotional roller coaster of this where my phone kept saying the laptop was connected to two minutes ago because it would the counter would go up and it'd be like last connected 50 minutes ago and then suddenly it would say one minute ago right in this 50 meter area where probably 50 people are in clusters of about 10 and you're trying to it was just man that was tough i mean i think my first strategy was to walk up to people and be like hey do you have a laptop for sale that was the first thing i said like do you have a silver laptop for sale and people would look at me so confused like was it stolen i'm like yeah and they're like just say you're looking for your stolen laptop yeah i'm like you know, that's that's how i do this like because i'm willing to buy it back from whoever yeah. took it and we did eventually get some of them to try to help us. There's one guy who got very excited about helping us find it. Huh. And he saw the ping on my phone and he was like, it could be on top of the laundry mat. So he like got a crew together and it suddenly I'm just standing there. And there's four people because I said I was going to pay a reward if someone helped me find the laptop. <laughs> and there's like suddenly four dudes climbing up that you know, outside of a building. Exactly to look at top of the laundry mat ladies coming up like what is going on and i'm standing there you took a picture of this moment I did, yeah the guy's trying to get on the roof which was beauty ridiculous but beautiful but we'd kind of assumed maybe a backpack had been thrown and then i showed them the security camera image and they immediately said that's daryl and daryl's right there they point to this guy who we've been seeing for the last hour or so lean against the side of this black truck talking to the driver but Daryl doesn't have the backpack on anymore. And we go up and try to talk to Daryl. And Daryl's not saying anything. And there's no backpack that I can see. And the guys that are trying to help us and ID Daryl uh, went up and tried to chat with him and uh, were pretty stern about what they wanted. Yeah, it was pretty clear that I wanted the laptop back and I think he just decided this is too much Mm -hmm. over a laptop so I'm just going to not answer anything which is I guess the right thing for him to do because there wasn't much that we could do at that point Daryl uh, realized that even if he went and grabbed the laptop the outcome of it probably wouldn't be one that he liked so he just decided by saying nothing what are they going to do and he was right but it still said the laptop was in the area and then eventually that counter started going up where it said 
five minutes ago, 10 minutes ago, and then eventually said an hour ago. And as it's getting dark, Peter and I just have to decide the feet. Uh, I assumed the laptop had probably been powered off, which would be smart. And it's fully locked down. Like they can't get into it, but they probably powered it off and are just planning to deal with it later. And so we have to decide to say we're done. And I went home and man, like I do not like giving up on things, but I, I gave up. A while later on phone calls with my landlord, trying to explore things, trying to come up with solutions to make sure that the people who are entering this space are supposed to be here and we can have a better system. Uh, no solution was reached. And I still come here early in the morning and find the door unlocked from the night before, which is not supposed to happen. It's supposed to be locked in the morning. So the fact that someone can just walk into this building, just smash my glass, <laughs> you know, it's just like, yes, it's insured, but it, it like, it just feels very vulnerable in this space. But I got a ping on my phone, a little pin on the map that my laptop is at Yale Sushi at a restaurant. I am really trying not to get my hopes up, but. Okay. Well, Yale Sushi is definitely closed. There's a group hanging out out front, but as I'm pulling in here, I'm realizing there's also a computer repair shop down that alleyway there. Okay, my heart is just racing. Sometimes we keep it here. Dude, my relief. You are a legend. So okay. Give me, okay. I, I pay him 40? Yeah, okay. Give me the 40. Yeah, yeah how do I pay you? Let me pay cash. I don't have cash. Just pay my car. Okay. okay you don't right need to make this, man. Don't worry. Did, did it go through? Okay, I need a receipt. You, you like a find you track on this one? Of course. Yeah, yeah. The problem is it doesn't have a SIM card, so it doesn't have a cellular. Paying $44 to get back the computer that was stolen out of my office. Thank you for buying it for a good price of $40. Someone brought it in, no, sold it to you. Is he he want to sell this oh, one here. Yeah. $200. Tell him, like, you stole this computer? He said yes. yes. He told, told you this. yes. And uh, I, I make the video. You can tell me. Yeah, okay. Give me the phone. So the guy, sure. so we are together. Yeah. Can okay. you switch yeah. the camera? If you, go, if you go like this, yeah. So then the guy was here. He asked me to buy. I said, I know that, like, he stole the computer. He yes. bought, like, it's somebody like, stole from the other person. Yes. Yes. Then I check on the screen. So this was minutes ago then? Yeah, I check on the screen. Just minutes ago? And ch I check on the screen like uh, the, your find yeah. the system was already on. How come you didn't call me? There is a no number. It says that it should say but a maybe, message. Maybe the brightness is low on that time. Okay. So then I, I check on the like a screen, yeah. don't, no number. Then I said like the nobody, somebody's tracking. Yeah. Uh, why not I keep it here? Yes. Then I offer him like a $20 is okay? He said okay. Go. 40? 20? No, no. 40. He said like 40? 20? 40? No, he said no. Okay, I give him forcefully yes. 40. Then he agreed. You did okay, some good sorry. negotiating. Yeah, so I, okay. He leave it here. Then you go. The adrenaline that comes from getting your device returned in your hands, phenomenal. What's up? Shut up. Stop. Want to buy a laptop, buddy? Where? Dude, how did you get this back? What the fuck just happened? <laughs> this has got to be a joke. <laughs> Are you fucking me? It was under my desk the whole time. No, stop. No, I'm kidding. Oh my fucking <laughs> god, dude. <laughs> I'm losing my mind right now. <laughs> this is so f <laughs> Dude. I, yeah, I, I got to get a different space. So I was delaying making this video because I knew it was going to be 
very uncomfortable for me if my landlord saw it and the or the other tenants and all that stuff and uh yeah i think before this uploads before i hit publish i'm gonna call my landlord and tell him i'm gone i'm done i don't think he cares uh, it's not gonna matter he'll find someone else to go in there um and i'm not even asking for your sympathy as a viewer i don't even think this was worth your time watching but for me this is the way for me to just process the stuff that happens in my life i've always joked that the nice thing about having a youtube channel is that when bad things happen it makes good stories and i feel that is true and it's fantastic to have the laptop back and also maybe if this video makes any ad revenue whatsoever it could help go to uh setting up my new studio which would be cool i need a new studio and also maybe uh maybe replace the the really nice bike i had that was stolen i'd like to replace that so that's why i made this video you don't have to care Life's better when you make stuff. Remember, life's better? When you make stuff. When you make stuff, yeah. Hey, <laughs> appreciate it, boss. Yeah.